on YouTube. Back um, a little bit, um, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit delayed than I said I would be. That's what usually happens, really. Um, obviously, last minute I said I was uh, went away for a short holiday, a week or so, and come back, and now um, settled uh, a bit more. <coughs> and the spare room now is um, a bit more converted. I've got my actual stuff over here now, so which is good. Excuse me. So basically, um, starting off from the room, uh, the whole chest of drawers here, I'll go through with you in a minute or so. It's a much more uh, better place for my um, stuff now at the end of the day. More stuff's coming over um, gradually. So, as I said, um, I'm going to be doing like a series um, around the British Army um, during the Cold War. So mainly uh, BOR, British Army the Rhine, and going somewhat into the British Army in Northern Ireland. Um, <clears throat> I'll focus a little bit on um, uh, British Army deployments in um, slightly a bit in Malaya, uh, Borneo, um, Aden, Amman, etc. Um, because they tie in with the whole Cold War thing, especially Borneo and Malaya, fighting against the communist insurgents and. Um, uh, and like in Borneo, fighting against the um, communist regime in um, Indonesia at the time. <coughs> um, so, starting off, <coughs> excuse me, across the thing today. Um, what I'm wearing at the moment, uh, so the KF shirt, sorry, the button's a bit thing on this. Uh, KF shirt, I've got the sleeves on the because it's very warm in here. I've got like, every window in the house open at the moment, it's very, very warm. Um, Kev shirt, uh, some, known to some as the Harry Mary. Um, it's, got, it's like a wool, um, wool server shirt you normally wear under your uh, combat jacket, etc. Sometimes you'll have a tinker sewn onto it, depending. Generally, you do. Uh, I haven't got around to that at the moment because of my other one has my own insignia on it at the moment. Um, at the moment, I've got a uh, Royal Military Police Barrier on at the moment with um, Queen's Crown Cat Badge. <coughs> Because <clears throat> main stuff we do uh, with my Marine Habit group is um, revolved around the Royal Military Police. Um, I tend to sometimes venture into regular infantry uh, county um, measurements as well. Many Royal Habit Regiment. You might just be able to see the cap actually up here, actually. <coughs> Not on there, so the cap. Big cap. Excuse me. Um, <coughs> uh, Number two, service cap, Royal Military Police. So I'll say um, early, uh, oh, so mid, seven, mid 70s to sort of now, it's still being worn. Um, sort of the, uh, the top cover, black band, sort of felt band, and then uh, black classic uh, uh, visor, etc. And then just the inside as well. Cool, and again, cap badge. Um, that replaced the um, SD cap with the uh, top um, elasticated cover. Um, this badge is normally from that, so this would normally go on there. Um, I really do like the SD cap um, ones. I could do a lot of um, earlier style stuff, especially like early Northern Ireland and um, early British Island Rhine as well. Late 60s, early 70s even. Um, I will show you actually. So, in regards to that early sort of style stuff, you would have a 60 pattern, <coughs> 60 pattern combats, or even the uh, 60 um, pattern DPM. Generally, I've gone for the to put this style of signature on the 60 pattern. So, trousers are in there, uh, attributes to 60 pattern. Sun collar is the main sort of um, um, point you can see. Obviously, generally the colour. Obviously, it's, it's sort of an OD olive green style. Um, patches on the arm. So we have the Berlin Brigade patch. This is the early type with um, without the Berlin, um, without um, the word Berlin above the uh, the um, red circle upon black background. So the letter version, I'll say. 
Um, it, it, it came in sort of the uh, very late 50s, early 60s, and this style, and then it was re like very, very quickly replaced with the one with the Berlin 90 on it as well. Going down, um, large jack stripe, large corporal, um, and then onto the early type um, military police um, armband. So, red lettering on black background, which I'll show you. Red lettering on black background, um, and then was replaced by the uh, black lettering on red background, which is still used today. <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me, I really, really like the setup. Um, I can do a lot of it's. It's a nice sort of um, sort of thing to do. Uh, and with this, you wear the SD cap. I'll show you. Um, Thirty-seven pattern uh, belt, um, holster, etc. And uh, gaiters as well. So um, sort of thirty-seven pattern gaiters. You um, you won't be wearing putties until with most troops actually you won't be wearing putties until say very late 60s, early 70s is when they sort of started um, bringing the parties again <coughs> for regular infantry, generally we were still wearing um, uh, gaiters. Okay, again, not school drop on that side as well. <coughs> and I think I've shown most of the uh, sixth pattern stuff in previous series before, but because this is the main series about the Cold War, <coughs> I'm going into a bit more detail. Okay, so let me just get this open. So, on the collar, just see, sorry if it cuts, comes a bit backwards, but um, basically, uh, size 7, NATO, size uh, 8090, 9000, um, uh, maker's mark is James Smith & Co. of Derby, of Derby even, uh, limited, uh, Staverley. Um so yeah, smock combat, 1960 pattern, and then the uh, NATO code there. So yeah, so that's the jacket itself. Trousers. We've got two pairs here. I think this is a slightly smaller pair. Oh no, this is size seven as well. So uh, large, so long, small is the uh, thing. So that's the size seven. So trousers. Um, vaguely similar to the 68 pattern, which replaced it. But basically, <coughs> on trousers, one large hat pocket on, on the uh, left leg, on the right leg, well, on the right leg, sort of the bright bum cheek, you would have the uh, back uh, main pocket. <coughs> and like the 68, um, no flap because this will be covered by the smock coming over. Um, large back pocket there, and then um, shell dusting pocket in the front. Large deep pockets, really, really great. <coughs> Lovely pair of trousers, basically. Um, nice and thick and really, really durable. Um, the other ones I have are slightly better. Um, example, just larger size as well, but uh, these are they're size 7, these are size 8. These are much nicer. These are practically brand new. I was very, very lucky to get a hold of these, really. So they are, again, um, trousers combat 1960, size 8, and same company again, these are a very very nice pair, these are, these have been kept in the box I think most of their life, so, and they're absolutely gorgeous, <coughs> and a subject of 60 pattern, <coughs> what I'm wearing is the DPM 60 pattern, which I did mention in the last video I was getting. So exactly the same cut as a 60 pattern um, in plain colour. These are the uh, DPM or um, sometimes known as the 66 pattern uh, DPM. So again, large pockets, shell dressing, large back pocket, uh, back pocket on this side as well. They have um, ties at the bottom of the trousers <coughs> to um, tie around the ankle itself. <coughs> Excuse me. 
on at the moment I have so you can see putties on the moment so I'm doing um, early to late 70s um, some guys would even have 60 pattern 66 pattern DPM stuff up until the early 80s because they've been in so long generally if it's if it's not broken why fix it <coughs> and it's still doing the same job at the end of the day so putties wrap round say if you're putting your standing down um, on your left leg so your right leg you roll to the right and vice versa um, on the other leg um, on DMS boots like is the one so and do it mod sole on the bottom um, under there so with, with the trousers you don't tuck your trousers into the pussies um, and generally if you do it tends to ride a lot and rub a lot and it rides up the uh, putties actually to come off the boot as well it's a pain in the ass, absolute pain in the ass. So, um, what I do, I get twist um, <coughs> twist ties. So the brush only ones that I'll show you. Uh, I think I've got some here. Uh, so like this, but these these are a modern type. I've got um, some um, nice nineteen eighties ones on at the moment. But basically, them my, the ones I've got on are like a thicker rope tie, but elasticated. They go around, they hook together. And then you tuck your trouser, um, the bottom of your trouser hem, underneath that, and then it will comfortably uh, sit on the bottom of there, like that. <coughs> and it nicely sort of blouses them over, which is good. Okay, <coughs> so going with this, you would have with this sort of thing. I've got a six-button jacket here. Six pattern. Haven't sewn the uh, insignia on yet. I will do at some point. Basically, almost exactly like the uh, 60 pattern plain colour jacket there. So if you're there, you saw this in the last video, I believe, I can't remember, or in another video, I know you have. So, reinforced um, elbow, pat, elbow uh, patches, so to reduce wear. Four large pockets in front, um, top two are slanted, so you can use for easy access, etc. Um, <clears throat> As I mentioned in the previous video, <coughs> excuse me, as far as I remember, I uh, referred to another channel called Rifleman and More. Um, really, really good to go check him out um, because he does some really, really good in depth stuff about things of a shinny. Um, moving on, uh, another recent acquisition I made when I was away was this. So, some of you will know what this is. Um, basically, British Army right button. Um, seen a lot in Northern Ireland, Aden, and places like that. Um, basically, guys who would go out and <coughs> the really quell like a, like a riot or a demonstration would normally carry these, along with maybe riot guns, riot shields, etc. And sometimes the rifles as well, if things got hairy. Um, the main way I've been to, I've been taught to sort of I've been told to sort of hold it sort of with the thumb in the thing to stop anyone trying to grab it off you, but depending on who was where who was using it really, that was how I was told. But um, that's really sort of main things. Um, moving on, I'm going to pick the camera up. I'm going to give you a quick walk around the room. Um, it's only a small room, but I've got um, excuse me, um, I've got a few things I'm not sure. Okay, so first off going, if you can see, oops, is it? Okay. okay, first going off two, so bookshelf going up, got a few section of things in here, um, not really what we really meant the videos about really, but basically going into um, some uniforms I have on the rack at the moment, this is only a very small part of the connection itself. So a few, um, it's number two dress, badge up the RMP stuff at the moment. Basically the, I will use swapping over buttons, very, very similar to this. I just need time, um, so just spend on that really. Okay, so number two is moving on to the jumper. Got the thing that was Royal Hampshire at the moment. Lance Corporal Stripe on there. This is an acquisition from a while ago. <coughs> um, 1980s, this one is made by uh, Magro. You just see that. So Magro. 
basically it's like an assault vest um so there's pockets for grenades and extra magazines etc um it's a very very cool little um thing i picked up basically it's sort of um <coughs> um almost like a 68 dpm jacket which has sort of been converted into sort of like an assault vest very very cool little thing um there's a 66 pattern jacket i've said about um pair of 68 um pattern trousers sorry 66 60 pattern um standard um issue shirt a lot more comfortable than this bloody thing um that's that for that rack <coughs> going into the helmet stand so uh sd caps and uh service caps up top for number twos going down just some small items um this is a converted um tankers into a um, para i picked up a couple of years, a good, good few years ago um actually i think i probably shouldn't know the videos a while back here um uh Brody Mark One. Um this is a rethink of a nineteen thirty nine one, so line is slightly different, the strap is different I think. <coughs> Stamp thirty nine as well. Going down, just um navy blue, dark navy berry. Um cold weather headwear. Um this is the latest style one. Um I've been looking around for a sixty eight pattern one for a while. They're a bit tricky to find. And generally the ones you do find are a bit too small. Um and all the things. Bit of helmet M1, um crap out, some guys call them. Great little piece of headwear. A lot of guys didn't like them until like you saw special forces guys using really. Thing um 58 holster with a browning in at the moment and the um which was the uh um stock pouch for the um SLR Later was used by a lot of RMPs for like cuffs and such. Very, very useful thing. <clears throat> Moving into the drawers. Actually, I'll show you on the side first. Some um, Grenadier Guard um, sort of small posters, which will be framed shortly. I've got some frames coming in and some more posters as well um, to frame them up. Let's keep going carrying one. Um, Essex respirator bag. Um, I might have shown this in the previous video, but basically, if I just put this up for the next minute. So Essex respirator bag and bag, most of the stuff's in there, a few little things missing here and there generally because it's either difficult to get hold of them or you can't really, but I know some guys will never get hold of them, so starting with the thing, Essex respirator bag, side pockets uh, on this side, so you would have your, um, I believe this is the uh, yeah decontamination kit, Put that back in there. Open up the bag. You have obviously the respirator, Essex respirator. So this one is dated 1967. At the moment, I have I don't have the case for them. So at the moment, they're staying in. At the moment, is the uh, Essex respirator spectacles for anyone who would be using glasses, i.e., like myself. Um, there are um, gas on spectacles which you would place in the respirator into the small indentation holes in the top. Just see them up there, just make them out. So they're basically just up here, and just up here where the thing is fixed. So, <coughs> they would fit in there. This one is an Avon made one. I think just make that out on the thing here, here we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. And those little things there. Don't want to focus at all. No, it doesn't really want to focus. Basically, it says um, 967 Avon 67 SR6 2 GD. <coughs> so that's the respirator itself. Moving on to the next item. On the top, I have the um, uh, rubberized gloves. So these are the over gloves. I can't, it's very, I can't seem to find any of the um, um, under gloves which will go underneath the. Uh, rubber ones which will make it more comfortable to wear these and your hands will sweat etc. Um, so they on the top little pocket, I believe that's some correct way to put them in. Um, going into the bag itself, uh, just some, um, uh, so these are the uh, detector papers. So when wearing the MBC suit, you place these, at certain points you place these onto your suit 
Um, and if they change colour, etc., they would detect um, for any um, chemicals in the air, like um, nerve agents, etc. Uh, oh, good. So, detect papers. Um, these are just some um, repair patches for the NBC suit. In there should be black, I believe. Oh, yeah. So basically, you say if you have a hole in your suit, you, point, you need to repair it very, very quickly. You would strap, slap those, one of those across the thing and it would repair the gap. Um, next thing is the um, Fuller's Earth. So it comes in a little bottle. Um, so this is the Twinish kit. Let me just turn off the light quickly, see if it helps actually. Um, a little bit, yeah. So, full as earth, little, little bowl. Basically, you would powder this all over yourself and it will um, help reduce the uh, crappy atmosphere. Actually, let me put the light back on actually. I can't really see. Um, okay, put that aside quickly. Um, at the bottom, I have this is the um, anti dimming kit. So, Unscrew this and it will be able to uh, clean and get rid of the uh, dimming, etc. Masking, etc. Um, in this little pocket here, I've got gloves at the moment, but generally you would have your spare canister in this pocket in here. I'll just show you. So, side little pocket there, you would have a spare canister. Here, I have the um, dosometer. Basically, you wear this on your wrist and it'd be linked to a gold counter or dosometer. Um, unit um, and basically give you um, readings on uh, radiation or things of that nature. So that's the uh, SX respirator. Um, I have a few items still missing, such as the um, um, chemical antidote um, syringes, which uh, basically it's like, a, it's like a tube. It's almost like a um, um, adrenaline syringe, like uh, anyone who has enough allergy would sort of have. Basically, it's a tube has a clip on the bottom and like a needle inside you basically place it onto yourself, hit it onto yourself and the um, you'll be injected with the antidote to say a nerve agent just to give you at least a fighting chance to survive it because their nerve agents are not nice at all okay going on to the uh, drawers <coughs> so first drawer just some uh, belt kit, um, lanyards, sashes etc a couple of um, stable belts in there so RP and Royal Engineers um, and white um, 37 pattern belt as well for braid wires, etc. Next drawer, um, just some World War II, um, uh, First World War paperwork stuff, some repro, some original. Did you see that? I think. Yeah, cool. Next drawer going down, we have some insignia, a lot of um, brassards, um, middle ribbons. Uh, Armbands, etc., and rank titles, etc. Okay. Next one down is 37 pattern kit. But obviously, it's not really roughly to the video, but I thought I'd just show it anyway. Now I'm here. And obviously, the collection in my house now is building um, because I'm picking up stuff from home. So, next one down is mainly Cold War stuff now. But all Cold War stuff in the drawer. There's some uh, Block 58 stuff in here. Um, uh, glass carrier, some belt kit, etc. Some spare gloves for the NBC kit. Torch, etc. And bottom one is a lot of um, NBC and uh, Cold War uh, documentation stuff. So, just a minute. There we go. Okay, so. For example, the uh, Survive to Fight booklet, so it shows you what to do in the events of MDC attack, um, and your caught out in the open, etc. So, how to place on your respirator and your equipment. Uh, sorry, there you go. Sorry, equipment and basically um, <clears throat> what to have in your equipment and your bags, etc. Battle, um, basic battle skills booklet. Um, booklet for the 58 pattern weapon. 
Um, this one, with all my um, uh, R&P paperwork, uh, police stock booklet. Um, this one was my dad's, um, used in Northern Ireland. <coughs> um, so there's a lot of details of like, car stops, etc. in there. Um, the video's been a bit, obviously, all over the place at some points, but I'm getting there, I just need some um, better equipment set up and film this on an iPad at the moment. <clears throat> so I leave up from the phone. Um, so yeah, the next video will be out within a certain next couple of weeks, once I've got a few more bits down here. Um, obviously it's a lot better than it was recently. Oh yeah, underneath, sorry, the racking where the uh, jackets were uh, hung up, we have some, um, I've got a 58 sleeping bag, some other cold weather, uh, weather sleeping bags um, from like uh, 82, I think one of them is. 82, um, and then some Vietnam um, jungle boots as well, the third pattern ones I think, because they've got the reinforced side parts and the uh, nylon um, tops of the boots and the, obviously the uh, spike resistant soles. Um, so yeah, that'll conclude it for today. Um, thank you for watching, if you have been. Uh, really, really appreciate it. I hope, as again said, I hope the next video will be out within the next couple of weeks. A few more bits here, a lot more decorating will be done in this room. Um, stuff will be hung up properly and hopefully it will look a lot more nicer. It does at the moment, but it still looks really, it still looks better than it did. Especially considering the last video I had, which was literally just me in one jacket. Now stuff's here, I'm able to actually do a proper video and get back into things. See, season's starting soon. Um, if I might see it, if any of you are going to hack green, um, in at the end of um, April, Hack Green is a nuclear bunker up north, um, sort of, um, I think, where is it? Not too far away from Sheffield, way, I think, as far as I'm aware. Um, it's basically like a civil defence bunker that used to be an RAF um, calling station um, during the last war. Um, now it's, um, then it was converted into a uh, um, nuclear bunker complex for um, civil defence of that area. Um, there's places all around the UK like that um, for civil defence for the local government basically. Really cool, really, really cool thing to go to. I haven't been there before so it'd be an experience. If seen any of you guys there that'd be great. Um, I know um, Rafa Moore who I mentioned previously has um, been to that event a few times. I might bump into him there if anything I might have a, and get a chat with him. That'd be great. But yeah, thank you so much for uh, watching. Um, Hopefully the next one will be out in a few weeks. Um, if not, I'll try and keep you guys updated. Um, <clears throat> the Facebook page I mentioned in the last, uh, linked in the last video, I think. <clears throat> um, I'll put updates on there to anyone who wants to post a thing. If I'm able to get a video out soon or something along those lines. I know one or two of you I spoke to via um, Facebook as well about the videos, etc. Um, sorry, I've been obviously with the whole video. There's been um, a bit hit and miss really but it's just how things are really um, but yeah thank you so much um, hopefully I can get another video in the next few weeks uh, and um, I'll see you then thank you bye